this diamond's experience along the way. You see what a diamond is for. That they went through. And so this room commemorates. It can happen in your neighborhood, it can happen in your school, as a maid, cook, domestic work. Some have raised some money. 
or you have to go work off your go work off your go work, go work off your your fine fine go work off your your sentence. So then just go to the, the county government and sell them out to uh, the plantation. And you know, first of all, I didn't bet none of I didn't know that, and I was a history fanatic. I wasn't really aware of that. I don't think it's something that's generally understood. But the point is that kind of stuff kept going. And, and, and you know, one of the core missions we're trying to do here with, as our role as a museum and as an education institution is to help find ways to get that out there. You know, not everyone's going to go read a big long book or watch a big movie or watch a long documentary, but there are some ways we can try to figure out to get that communicated. We're, we're working on that hard. Um, but get across that basic point that there is there's a there's an essential core element of slavery, which is which is exactly the same today as it was in American slavery, as it was during the Civil War, as it was in, throughout human history, which is this exploitation of people uh, for money. That's what it was. And I think when people start to think of slavery, those definitions, as opposed to these historic legal definitions, it starts to get them get the much bigger community of people activated. I know we're all trying to do because I think when we talk about an issue like what happened in the Civil War right in the United States, we talk about issues, we talk about what's happening in uh, it's in this country and around the world, it's not like these things are legal, right? You guys all know that. It's all illegal. There's laws everywhere. But there's a choice that communities make about what they choose to spend, spend their resources on law enforcement. A choice that, uh, you know, there's a choice they make about what resources they spend on law enforcement. There's a choice that individuals make about what they think is really wrong or what they think is okay and not a big deal. And the reality of why we have this today and the numbers that we do that you guys are all aware of is because that's not front of mind to the public. You know, a police officer in most parts of the United States has a limited amount of time and resources to devote to what their crimes are trying to go after. And what their community is telling them is, hey, go solve murders, go solve drug deals, go solve these things. Don't. They don't even sign on the radar screen. So it, it's happening around them, but they're not trying to do anything about it because it's not their